Hey guys, Tammy here. And in this video, we're going to talk about preparing for court. Now, again, whether you're self-represented or whether you have an attorney, you need to be prepared going in. Let me remind you, if you like these videos, please hit like and also subscribe to the channel so you get notified as new videos are released. The number one thing that I think that you can do is to be proactive. And I see so many people make this mistake, especially when they have an attorney. They just sort of sit back and they let the process happen or they have this misconception that somehow because their case is started, it's just going to automatically be pulled through the system. And that's true to an extent. It will get pulled through the system, but it gets pulled through the system very, very slowly. I will tell you that the average length of time in California is 12 months, not unusual for it to be 18 months to two years. Um, most jurisdictions have specific timelines that they try to adhere to. And so it can be a little bit different in every state, but honestly, you know, it's, if it's complicated, we've seen things go on for three, four, five years. And this is one of the reasons that it helps if you're proactive and you're doing what you can from your end to push your case forward. And also, if you can get into mediation, mediation is faster, easier, cheaper, all those things. So if you haven't explored mediation and you're new to the process, please get in touch with me so that we can have a conversation about mediation because it will save you so much heartache. But in this video, we're talking about preparing for court. One of the other things that happens if you're self-represented is you've got to be able to think on your feet. You can be as prepared as you can possibly be. You can research. You can do all the things that I talk about in the videos. You can get a coach. You can get help. You can consult with an attorney. You can do all these things to get input to help you prepare. But inevitably, something is going to happen in that courtroom that you didn't plan for. And this is why I always say it's critical to have a notepad and a pen with you because you want to be able to take notes while the other person's talking. You want to be able to write down anything that you feel you need to respond to. Sometimes when somebody says something, it'll trigger a thought in our head and we'll be like, oh, I need to say something about that. And so we can write down what it is we think that we need to say. If you wait until that person's done talking and then it's your turn, guess what? If you're like me, that thought could be totally gone by then. So you want to do what you can to help yourself in that moment. And having those tools with you is very helpful. Even if you have an attorney, it's helpful to have a notepad and pen because you might end up with something different written down than what they have written down. And, you know, the vast majority of people that I see go into court that have attorneys they don't take anything with them. They simply go in and sit at the table next to their attorney and let their attorney handle the case. And again, I've talked about this, like your attorney doesn't always share your exact values and your exact way of parenting and moving through the world. I hope that you've chosen somebody that at least shares similar values, but none of us have exact same styles of parenting and uh, and living, or, or we'd all be the same, right? Variety is the spice of life. So we're all a little bit different. So you may end up with something in your notes or that you notice that ends up being helpful to your attorney in this process. So it can't hurt anything for you to be proactive and to take that in with you. That enables you to kind of help facilitate your own case and be able to ask your attorney, okay, what's the next step? What's the next thing that you need from me? What will happen after this? What's the typical timeline that you see for these things? Because if you're just sitting at home and you're not making any noise, guess what's going to happen? The attorney's, you know, going to go, oh, shoo, that one of my umpteen cases isn't rattling the cage right now. So I'm just going to let it be. And it's not because they're trying to proactively ignore something. It's just because they have so many fires going on that they're worried about the next fire that's in front of them. They're not worried about, you know, the thing that's not happening for several weeks and is down the road. And so it doesn't tend to come in front of them until there's a hearing or something like that. 
but you should be able to reach out to the assistant or whoever and find out, okay, what's the next thing? What do I need to do? Is there something you need from me? What are we waiting on? And they ought to be able to tell you what the process is. I also think it's important to keep a record of your entire file. Again, even if you have an attorney, if you are self-represented, this is obviously even more critical. But even if you have an attorney, a lot of times people change attorneys or make some decision like that, or they run out of money and they have to substitute the attorney out. And you can go and pick up your file from the attorney, but you know, it's very it's it's very, very difficult sometimes to be able to go in the middle of the day. You got to work. You got to find time to go over and pick up your file. Sometimes attorneys charge copying fees for doing that. And if you had just been keeping track of everything that was sent to you, you wouldn't have had that issue. Your attorney should be sending you copies of everything they receive from the other side and everything they file in your case. And most of the time now in this post-COVID environment, we do that via email for most clients. You should be able to, from the very beginning, put together a notebook, even if it's a three ring binder, however you choose to keep it and just keep things in date order. When something's filed with the court, it's got a date stamp on it and you can keep it in date order if you aren't sure how to organize it yet. If you don't know how to organize it by type of document yet and you're confused at what you're looking at, just keep it in date order. Then if you get a new attorney or you end up having to sub your attorney out for some reason or something happens to your attorney, God forbid, you know, whatever, um, you've got your file right there in front of you and you're able to handle it. The other thing I would tell you is that whatever you're going to court for, when you're going to court on a specific motion, that's the only topic that the judge can discuss with the parties. So if you're going in on, let's say, a child custody issue and nobody brought up, nobody asked for support or brought up support in that paperwork, the court can't then make an order on support. The court can only make an order on whatever subject has been brought up in front of them. And when you have things that are filed by the other side and by you, particularly your documents, it's always helpful to have an extra sometimes two extra sets of copies of things you filed. Why? Because sometimes things don't make it to the file. Sometimes uh, the opposing party or the opposing counsel, they think they have a copy of it, but they can't find it in that moment to be able to know what you're referencing or what you're talking about. And so it's real helpful to have extra copies of at least your documents that are relevant to the hearing that you're going in on. But overall, you want to be keeping your entire case file in order and keeping it organized at the very least by date so that as things happen, you have all the tools and resources that you need to be able to be proactive in your own case. You know, a lot of times I get on the phone with coaching clients and I'll say, well, you know, when was your original petition first filed? Uh, sometime in early 2022, but they don't remember exactly when, you know, okay, well, have you been to court before on custody? Yes. What was that date? Uh, it was sometime in the fall last year. You know, they don't have specifics. And so when you're trying, when you're working with experts, whether it's a coach, whether you have a guardian ad litem, whether you have, um, a custody evaluator, evaluator, whether it's a therapist, any of these types of experts that are involved, it's helpful for them to have sort of a timeline, a chronology of what's transpired, particularly in regards to your child custody. So if you have your file and it's all in a three ring binder and you've got all the documents, guess what? You've got everything there that you need to complete any forms you're asked to complete, to provide any information or anything that you might need to do and I think this is really important when it comes to helping your child, right? You want to be as prepared as possible. And we don't always think about keeping those court forms and keeping them in a one specific place. A lot of times people are going back and they're trying to look through emails or dig for it or, or whatever. And if you're going to keep it electronically, that's fine. I would just encourage you not to keep it in email. I would encourage you to create a file on your computer and organize it like I said, by date and maybe title of document 
so that you have things and you have it readily accessible. But I do think hard copies can be very, very helpful, especially if you're trying to learn and be proactive in your own case, because the more you study those and read through them, the more you will start to understand what's happening at each of the hearings and the more that you'll be able to either, you know, be proactive for your own case or be proactive in helping your attorney to get the outcome for your case that you're looking for. So I hope that's helpful. If you'd like to talk to me, you can always go to divorceuniversityonline.com forward slash VIP dash coaching. You can learn about my coaching services and there's a link on there that you can use to book a free strategy session with me. I would love to talk to you and see how I might be able to support you in this process. Thanks so much. I'll see you guys in the next video. 